Hi everybody, um, Dana Eshelman here, registered dietitian, nutrition coach. Um, so I just wanted to pop on today, um, really great questions uh, around the ratio of omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. Um, I think today there's <clears throat> a lot of talk around how to reduce inflammation, what inflammation is, and omega-6 fatty acids have particularly been um, brought to the forefront as an inflammatory food. Um, however, we do need a balance of omega-6s and omega-3s in our body. They both um, provide different functions in our body. And so it's not that we wanna completely put omega-6s on the back burner and ignore them. We definitely wanna have a balance. Um, and there's, like I said, there's different functions for them in our body. And so we'll talk a little bit about that and how and why that is important. So currently, right now, um, omega-6s have really been given a bad rap because, you know, we've switched to a really high um, animal fat-based diet and kind of what is termed the American or the Western diet, right? And so this particular diet has caused a lot of inflammation because of um, the way the omega-6s are digested and the impact they have in our body. Um, right now, what we're seeing is closer to about a 15 to 1 ratio. So if we were to look at omega-6s, they would be closer to that 15 and omega-3s are closer to that 1. Um, a more optimal range is around one to one, and some research, uh, partic particularly cardiovascular research, shows a four to one ratio again of omega sixes being four, omega um, threes being that one. Um, <clears throat> and so, what this has caused over over the years, and what it it's shown is that inflammation leads to many chronic conditions. Um, and we'll talk again more about that later. But I really want to dive into what particular or what exactly are omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-6 fatty acids are what are termed linolenic, linoleic acid and or some people will write LA. Um, whereas omega-3s are alpha linolenic acid or ALA. And both of these chains are polyunsaturated fats. And the reason why they're polyunsaturated fats is because they contain two double bonds within their chain. So super sciencey that we probably will never need to know, but the reason why this is important is basically how these chains break down in your body and what they trigger. So both omega-6 and omega-3 cannot be made within the body. So it needs to be consumed. Um, and like I said earlier, these both have functions, uh, different functions in our body. So they're both vital nutrients for our bodies to have. But again, it's that balance and creating that balance that is going to help us reach optimal health. So Omega-6 fatty acids are particular, particularly needed for proper growth and development. So that's looking at things like our reproductive system, our skin, our hair, our bones. Um, this omega-6 is found in vegetable oil, so things like soybean, corn, um, cotton seed, um, those oils. Um, it's also found in nuts and seeds, and it's primarily found in animal proteins. And then omega-3 fatty acids are, you know, and this is, most people know this one, is that it's um, important for cognitive health and brain function, right? Um, behavior, our mood, our circulation, um, also skin and heart health. And this is most prevalent in things like your walnuts, um, flax and chia seeds, and then also those cold water fish. So um, salmon, sardines, herring, um, albacore tuna, 
uh, river or, or sorry, lake trout. Um, uh, what else? Um, oh, and um, sardines. And then also the, the things that those fish eat, which is algae, right? And so that is where we're going to find our omega-3s. Um, omega-3s are going to be best consumed and digested um, or most bioavailable is what it's called in those um, animal-based sources. In the plant-based sources, our bodies don't as adequately um, digest those or turn them into those um, subcategories of EPA and DHA, um, which again kind of um, allows it to be utilized in the body. And so like we talked about is we really want to create a balancing act between omega-3s and omega-6s. And so when we have too much of one, which right now we're seeing in the Western diet too much omega-6, it can impair the other one. And um, like, like I said earlier, over, you know, the past hundred years here, we really, as an, as a society have switched to a higher animal fat diet with things like margarine, vegetable oils, um, processed foods, things like that, um, which has, uh, caused that infl inflammation that we're seeing in our diet or seeing in our diet, seeing in our, um, in our health. And, um, the, re the breakdown of that is omega-6 is part or specifically are reactive um, and they uh, lead to things like aging and chronic disease, um, whereas omega-3s are seen as anti-inflammatory. So we want to have a balance of both of those because they both provide function in our body, but we need to... Um, create balance there. And so how do we do that, right? Um, some some good in terms of nutrition recommendations that you can start to do is aiming for two to four servings of those cold water fish per week. Um, so again, some of those cold water fish, um, salmon, albacore tuna, mackerel, herring, um, lake trout, sardines, um, <clears throat> algae is also in there, but we also want to be cognizant again that the algae and the plant-based sources are not going to be as bioavailable in our bodies. Um, you also can look at um, increasing what is the monounsaturated fats um, or oils that are also rich in those. So things like olive oil, avocado oil, macadamia or macadamia oil. Um, supplements are also always a, an option, um, more or less as a last resort here. So when we do supplementation, you always want to be aware of if you have any medications that interact with these. So if you're on any <clears throat> high blood pressure or, or sorry, anti, yeah, antihypertensive, um, antiplatelet or anticoagulant medication, um, you want to be sure to check with your primary physician to be sure that they are okay with you doing a um, omega-3 or an algae supplement. So algae supplements can be for vegetarian-based um, or vegan-based um, clients. And then more of the omega-3s. And what I would recommend there is looking for omega-3s that have the EPA, DHA profiles. So um, big picture here is we want to start to look at our nutrition and which foods have omega-3s, which foods have omega-6s. And are you having some sort of balance there? Um, if you're somebody that does not enjoy fish or um, cold water animals, then definitely consider a supplement, you know, all things considered with um, checking out your health and any medications, like I said, that you maybe are on. 
but that can be a good resort as well in terms of having that balance. So um, would love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know if you have questions and I hope you have found this useful.